Does this thing actually work? Is it time to go to the dentist? And what are all these numbers for? Stick around and let's find out. So the first of our garden gadgets that we're going to look at today is in this package. I opened it up and it comes in this nice hard plastic storage case. Undo the clips and open the lid and here's our mini chainsaw. It comes with instructions, the battery and the unit itself. The battery connects here at the bottom, it's got a nice short chain bar and this hinged guard along the top. It feels nice and lightweight and really portable. The chain seems to be adjusted well and I can move it around the bar. If we take a look around this side, here's the motor housing, nice and compact. And it's got a finger squeeze trigger to operate it, with a safety lock that you have to press in first. It also comes with a couple of tools to adjust the chain. This adjustable screwdriver that slots either way round into the handle is quite cool. And let's have a look what we've got under the cover. I'm using the wrench to undo this lock nut, and taking off the plastic casing. And we can remove the bar. This is how you would change the chain if you ever needed to. And here's the adjuster for setting the tension. To reassemble it, just slide it back over the drive, make sure the chain is sat in the groove the whole way around the bar, and slot it over the lugs. I put the cover back on, and the lock nut, and because the chain tension is set correctly, I don't need to adjust it. There's actually an LED light here, which illuminates when it's operating, and here's where you access the chain tension adjuster screw. The last thing in the case is the battery charger, and you connect it to the battery like this. I'm plugging mine in, and we'll come back to this later when it's charged to find out how well it works. But next I want to show you what's in this box. When I open it up and remove the bag, you can see we've got this really large auger drill. It's an absolute beast. It's got this point on the end, which appears to be welded on nice and strongly. And on the other end, the size drops down and it's a hexagonal shape, so it can fit into a drill chuck. The auger blade is welded periodically up the shaft, and it seems like a good quality item. It's made out of nice thick steel. And the idea is we can use it in our electric hand drill. Tighten it into the chuck, and there we go. What a beast. So this is actually for drilling holes in the garden, and we can use it for planting plants. But let's see how well it works. So we choose where we want to make our hole, point it straight down, and start drilling. And wow, here it goes. Look at it cutting into the ground. It lifts the soil out up the auger blades and brings it to the surface. Pretty cool, huh? I'm starting by drilling just a shallow hole, but this should be deep enough for planting these flowers. It just drops straight in, and we can backfill with the soil we drilled out. That was so easy. So I'm drilling another one alongside, and it's actually great fun to use. You might want to hold the drill with two hands to give you extra support. When I went to plant these flowers, I think I got a bit carried away with my drilling, and I went a bit too deep. So I'm backfilling a little bit, then planting it same as before. But let's see how deep we can go. I'm drilling another hole alongside, and this time I'm keeping on going. I did find it a good idea to go up and down a few times to help clear the spoil. And look, I've gone so deep I've even got the chuck of the drill underground. I did find it useful to lift the whole thing out of the hole occasionally and remove the spoil from the blade. And I think that's about as deep as we can go. I'm dropping my tape measure down, and I reckon we're about 12 inches down from ground level if I remove the built-up spoil. That really is impressive, and it's so easy to use. You might be able to use that for a small post hole. I really like this, it's a great tool, and it definitely saves a lot of time. The next thing we're going to look at is this metal cutter sharpening tool. It's carbide, and it has a coarse sharpening and a fine honing edge. Remove it from the packaging, and you can see it almost looks like a large USB stick. Here's the fine honing, and the coarse sharpening is done on the corner. It comes with this handy lid, which is a really tight fit so it won't drop off, and it's got this handy pen holding clip, so if you like you could attach it to your belt, and you can use it for sharpening a whole host of things. I'm starting with these garden secateurs. These are pretty old and they haven't been sharpened for a long time. Using the coarse edge, you can see it really starts to sharpen the blade, and then if you like you can finish it off with the fine honer. And after just a few strokes back and forward across the blade, it feels so much sharper. And testing it out, it really has made a massive difference. Next I'm trying it with this small axe. I started on the one side, back and forth a few times, then turned it over to do the other side too. For this one I'm not bothering with the fine honer, and it only took about a minute to give us a really nice sharp cutting edge again. The carbide tool is so hard, it makes an excellent sharpener. I went on to do these garden shears, and it was easy to use even with these wavy blades. Then I did these garden scissors too, and I'm super impressed, it's worked really well. And you can see some of the metal filings on the sharpener which is ground off from the blades. The next thing I want to show you is this. 
It's a digital water timer. Let's take it out of the box and see what we've got. Slide it out of the bag and you can see it's quite a sizeable unit and it feels quite solid and really well built. It's got this connector here at the top and another one at the bottom. And if we turn it around, here's where we install some batteries. It takes a couple of AA batteries and the battery cover has a rubber seal so it's watertight. And I'll show you how easy it is to use. The first thing to do is set the time. Then enter the time that you'd like your hose pipe to turn on. Tell it how long you'd like it to run for. And how often. This could be hours or days. And that's it. It's as simple as that. There's a manual override button you can press and set how long you want it to turn on for. And this also starts a timer and tells you how long it's been running. And if I cancel that, this window also tells you how long it'll be until your next scheduled irrigation. There's a rain delay button in case it's raining and you want to skip the next irrigation. This extends the next schedule to six hours time. So there it is, it's really simple to use. The display turns off after a while so it doesn't run down your battery. And there's even a child lock. It comes with this hose adapter to screw onto the bottom and an adapter to fit different sized taps. The instruction manual is smart and easy to follow and it feels like a quality product. To use it, just remove the hose and the hose adapter from the outside tap, then screw on the timer. Connect your hose back on at the bottom, then double check your settings are as you want them and turn on the tap. That's all there is to it. When the time reaches the start time, it clicks itself on and allows water to go through your hose. I'm testing mine out with this garden sprinkler and it worked perfectly. So it's finally time to try out our mini chainsaw. Once the battery's charged, install it onto the bottom and it's ready to try. And straight away, you can see it whizzing. Let's see how well it works. The first thing I'm trying it with is this thin plank of wood. And yeah, it made easy work of that. So next I'm going to try it with this branch. Do make sure you're wearing adequate safety wear. I started by chopping this side branch off. Then I'm logging it up. And wow, yeah, check it out. It seems to have loads of power. And it's cutting through it all really easily. This branch gets thicker as we go along, so let's see how it fares when we get to the bottom. I like the hinged safety guard across the top. And it helps to spit out all of the sawdust at the front. And even though this branch is getting a lot thicker, it still cuts through it with ease. So let's try something a bit bigger. This piece is a lot bigger. And I'm having to cut through it from one side. Then because the blade is quite short, turn it around and finish it from the other side. But yeah, look at that. It's cut through it no problems at all. And that's a really decent size. It's really handy for pruning or you can even use it for cutting down things like posts. I did notice the chain had started to become a bit loose, probably just because it's new, so I removed the battery to make it safe, then used the tools they supplied to adjust the tension. But I think it's an excellent product and really great value for money. And don't forget there's links in the description if you'd like to buy one yourself. And if you'd like to see some more really cool gadgets and ideas, you can click on the links to see some of my other videos. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.